Welcome back, troglodytes, to Would You Rock or Not, Fender Friday Edition. This has to be my all-time favorite Stratocaster that I have ever seen come up for sale. It's an incredibly rare signature guitar for Yngwie Malmsteen. This is the Nylon String Stratocaster. Oh my goodness, where do we begin with this weird oddball guitar? It's just everything I love in weird instruments. Look at that pick guard. There's no pickups there. You just got a single volume control. But, I mean, if you look right here, there's still an output jack, so there must be a pickup somewhere, right? This utilizes a Mike Christian piezo pickup with a Bartolini preamp. So, yes, it's still an electric guitar, but you've got the nylon strings. So it's like playing a classical guitar as far as the tones go. And that is a sound that I personally love. But now it's on a Stratocaster body with a scalloped fretboard. Oh, Ingve, I love you for this thing, man. And if having classical tones on an electric guitar with a scalloped fretboard wasn't enough, you still have the tremolo bar on this thing. So if you remember that video I made a long time ago about weird guitar modifications, somebody screwed a trem bar into their classical guitar thinking, haha, funny, funny, but this one's real. Who doesn't want to dive bomb some classical guitar? Looking at the face of the headstock here, you have Yngwie's signature silk screened on it, as well as Fender Stratocaster. Another unique feature with this one is a brass nut. How cool is that? Super 70s and 80s. Scalloped fretboards are a little bit interesting. If you've never played one, they really are a big eye-opener as to just how much your finger really does drag on the fretboard. It makes playing faster a little bit easier, but if you have a heavy hand, you're definitely going to bend things out of tune. I had a flying V2 from the 80s that somebody did a terrible scallop job on, but that's how I have some experience with this, as well as a The Paul. Yngwie does this to so many vintage Stratocasters, it's just kind of his signature thing, so I love that this is a feature on this one. The pickguard itself appears to be multi-ply, it looks like maybe two, maybe three, and again just that single volume control right there, so it's real easy to do volume swells if you need to. The back of the instrument, you can see it's a four bolt on neck, I had somebody say, hey, those aren't bolts, those are screws. Yeah, you're right, but... For whatever reason, we call them bolt-on necks. And this little compartment right here is for the 9-volt battery to operate the piezo system, and maybe even the preamp, I'm not sure there. And yes, this one is made in Japan. Now don't let that scare you away. Japanese guitars, I've heard, are very good, but I've had very limited experience with them. But now it comes down to the price. $2,000. Yes, it's rare, but not being American made, that makes me very hesitant to spend this much on the guitar. Not because I have any bias of where it's made, that's just where collectors put money in. But there are quite a few older made in Japan models that fetch crazy money like this, such as the George Harrison Telecaster. But that's mainly because the late 60s ones are just way too expensive. <laughs> I'm not insulting his price, by the way. It looks like he paid around $2,500 for it, and I've seen others list for as much as $35. Guitars like these are hard to price since you don't see them show up every day. I believe somebody sent this guitar to me on my Facebook page, and I was just enamored with this instrument from the beginning. I wanted to purchase it, but there was one thing that stopped me from making an offer. Apparently this listing sold once before, but during transit, this big ugly Finnish crack line appeared and it was returned to the seller. Unfortunately, that's a deal breaker for me. I hate it when there's just one random Finnish checking line on the guitar, but like if the whole thing was covered on them, it would be okay. So safety in numbers, I guess. But I really do hope one day I can feature one of these rare mid-90s beasts. But why would Yngwie even want a guitar like this? Well, it actually ties in very well with his playing style, because he's kind of one of the neoclassical players. He learned all the classical music, and then he just kind of shreds upon them, and that built his own style. So being able to do all that with classical nylon string tones, it really just enhances his sound. <laughs> A 
Another thing that kind of stopped me from pursuing this one is the owner has already done an excellent playing demo on this that I could not do any better myself. So I will go ahead and play that one for you now. Just in case you're like me and you're really gassing for one of these, there was also a non-signature model of this instrument made, so now you have twice the chances to find one. The only question left, would you rock the Yngwie Malmsteen signature nylon string Stratocaster or not? Leave your answer down in the comments section below. Regardless of how you feel about this instrument, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.